Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch Terminator Dark Fate to see how accurate all the science and technology in this movie really are. This technology is showing up more and more throughout Hollywood, and from what I can see, it looks like the, it's like some sort of nanotechnology that can alter itself depending on user input. This technology exists today and has been around for about 10 or so years, and what we call them are nanobots. Nanobots can rearrange themselves and you can program them to take any shape that you want them to be. Like, for example, if you wanted a wrench or a hammer, or if you just wanted to like send a message and like write something out with them, they can do all of those things. Unfortunately, if you want this to happen, it's going to take you more than just two seconds. It will take, like, I think 10 hours to make a really, really basic shape. The nanobots we have today are not at Terminator level yet, but they can do some really, really cool things. And how they work is through, like, a robot hierarchy, which sounds pretty apocalyptic, a robot hierarchy. But just to stay with me, what happens in this hierarchy is that there's 100 nanobots, just for example, right? And only four or five of them are actually, like, the leaders so-called this whole system because you don't need to program 100 nanobots if you have a hundred all you need to program are like four or five and the rest of them will orient themselves and position themselves around where those four or five are placed if you wanted to break the pattern then what you have to do is find those four or five nanobots that are kind of like the focal point of the entire thing and once you displace them then the rest of the nanobots that are supposed to follow in suit don't really know where to go one thing also to mention is that you can only make metal objects with these nanobots because the bots themselves are metal. You can't bring them together and like make a new shape and just expect it to change the material. So like when it shows in the Terminator, the guy has like, I mean it looks like a cloth shirt. That can't be done and it's just like a basic law of physics. Like you can't take a lot of metal, put it together and then make plastic or cloth. Like it's just another metal. And by another metal, I don't mean like you can take a bunch of aluminum, crumple it together and make titanium. I meant you can take a bunch of the same metal, orient it any way you want, but it's still the same metal. Uh-uh. I keep my cell phone in a chip bag. The foil blocks the GPS signal. So they can't track me. Who's trying to track you? Yo, that lady is crazy, but her logic and her science are... Correct, if you take your cell phone or just any GPS and you put it inside of a tin foil or like aluminum foil, it's, I mean, like, like the bag of chips, for example, it's gonna really, really attenuate or like really weaken the signal or it might just completely disrupt it and the GPS won't work at all. I feel that aluminum would work better than tin, but either way, what you're doing is creating a Faraday cage. A Faraday cage is a device that prevents electrical fields from being formed inside of them. You can Think of it as like a hollow conductor where the outside layer is metal and that's why we use tin or aluminum because metal is a great conductor of electricity. And inside the hollow conductor is the cell phone. Well what's going to happen is that when signals try to reach the cell phone, they're going to be caught by the exterior of the Faraday cage and the signals won't be able to get through it because all that electrical like uh, energy is going to be around the cage and it won't actually reach the cell phone. And that same logic applies in reverse. If you're trying to call from that phone, which I don't know how you would do it, but if you're trying to send a signal from the phone that's inside the Faraday cage, that's not going to work either because the electrical signals are going to leave, try to escape the cage, and they're going to get caught. And all that's going to be on the external part of the metal cage. I began to understand what I'd taken from you. Wait, you grew a conscience? The equivalent to one, yes. It's an infiltrator. It's lying. And my mission was completed. There were no further orders. So for 20 years, I kept learning how to become a human. That's actually a, a really good point about, uh, before I get into like the, like the Terminator discussion, robots would make excellent liars because they wouldn't have any sort of like biological tell like humans do. Like, like your, your pupils wouldn't like be affected and your heart rate because your robots don't have hearts. And there's nothing really that a robot can do that would like be like a tell for a lie because they would tell a truth and a lie in the exact same way, just robotic verbatim. Most, if not all, the artificial intelligence that we have today have never-ending tasks. So when it comes to like the Terminator saying that there were no more, like no further orders, that wouldn't exist 
as we have AIs right now. And uh, like, for example, like the Amazon AI that like Jeff Bezos uses like every day. So when you have like an Amazon, like uh, Alexa or like Echo, whichever, whichever one it is, like it's constantly collecting information and the AI is actually using that information and it's doing what's called like a system analysis. So if you just, are just, if you're sitting next to your Amazon Alexa and you just keep talking about toothpaste over and over again, like Amazon will start recommending different like brands of toothpaste to you. And it's the AI that will cultivate all that data and it's going to use it to recommend whatever you were talking about to your specific Amazon account. But with this AI, there's no end to it. And the, the reason for that is because it's a form of system analysis and or data analysis, I guess. And as long as you have data coming in, there's always something new to be analyzed. And because of that, there's no, there's no like... In theory, there's no way for this AI to ever not be active, if that makes sense. Even if, let's say, Amazon.com was to shut down for a day, or which would probably be crazy, by the way, right? But if Amazon shut down for one day, the AI is not going to just think, oh, I wonder how eBay is doing, right? It's not just going to start doing something completely different because it doesn't have any further tasks to accomplish. There's always going to be information for it to analyze. As an engineer, I appreciate the writing that they used in this scene because like Arnold Schwarzenegger, the original Terminator, he said that he grew the equivalent of a human conscious. And that's very, very accurate to say, like if, I mean, in this scenario, if this was to actually happen, because no matter what AI or robot that you develop, they can never grow a true human conscious because they are not human. They can only grow the equivalent or really, really close to one, but you can never get to a human level because they are not human. Open the cargo bay. If it looked like they were floating in space while they were on an airplane, that's because it's 100% legitimate and there's a plane that's nicknamed the Vomit Comet that astronauts will use while they're on Earth to practice for when they get into space. The Vomit Comet uses parabolic motion and it'll ascend at a 45 or 50 degree angle really, really quickly until it reaches a certain altitude. After that, it'll just stop ascending and it'll just go straight. And when it goes neutral in altitude, it's about 20 to 30, I think they have it up to like 40 seconds now, that you just feel completely weightless. And people, you can actually go on this thing if you want to, you can just pay a certain amount and people will take you up there. And you'll feel like you were in space, you'll be completely weightless, and it's going to be like a true experience as if you were on the International Space Station. And that is a picture of Stephen Hawking on the Vomit Comet in 2007. Scientists have taken a bunch of things up there to test how they would actually behave while they're in space and one of the things they took up there was a pigeon. Or I don't know if it was one pigeon or multiple, but they wanted to see how a pigeon would fly if it was weightless. And I, I don't know how the pigeon turned out, but I can tell you that for humans, we use this thing all the time as an experiment for astronauts and it's a very, very good training simulation. That was a really, really fun movie. I had a very, very great time watching it. and. It, it, I, I was never bored throughout. One thing I was so concerned about was like while I'm watching it, I'm like, man, I really hope it doesn't drag on. And at no point did this movie falter. Like it was really fun. It's tough to comment on the time travel aspect of it because we haven't done time travel, like just as a human race. And I feel like if we have, probably would have known about it by now or at whatever generation has actually made time travel they haven't come back to this time <laughs> because if they have like there's enough surveillance and cameras and iPhones that somebody would have known about it thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed the video and if you have any other movies TV shows anime for me to watch and commentate over put them in the comments below and I'll get to it as soon as I can thanks again for watching stay fresh and stay golden